So you want to make some rapi pie. Well, you've come to the right place. I learned how to make it in Nova Scotia in a place called Mategan. It's in the southwestern shore of Nova Scotia. And we're going to dive right in and show you how to make a rapi pie. If you've never done this before, it's a process. There is no right or wrong way to make rapi pie. Well, okay, let, let me rephrase that. There's no standard recipe, at least none that I follow. It's pretty simple though. You need potatoes and they need to be russet potatoes. You're not gonna cook these in advance. You're gonna peel these up and set them aside and I'll get to that in the next clip. But to start with, absolutely, you need some russet potatoes. So I'm gonna go over the basic, the core ingredients of this thing. And you know what? There's really not a lot in it. Russet potatoes have to be russet. And of course, onions, right? So we're gonna make about, I don't know, 18 quarts, maybe a little less of liquid chicken broth. And we're gonna make this chicken broth from scratch. So those, we're gonna dice up those three onions and that's gonna go in the broth. So this is a crock, I keep saying crock pot. It's a stock pot, okay? It's a big pot because you're gonna make a lot of liquid. You're gonna make a lot of chicken broth. And that one big five pound chicken has got to go in there. I picked this up from Walmart for about $24 and I'd highly recommend it if you had a place to store the damn thing because it's huge. And look, there's a five pound bird, right? So you need a five pound whole chicken and you're going to take the gizzards out and all the liver and all that junk. You're going to take all that stuff out and make sure if yours has a little plastic pop-up timer that you take that out as well because you don't want that uh, melting into your, into your pot. So that's that, of course, salt and pepper, chicken, stock pot, onions, potatoes. And then when you're preparing the potatoes, you're gonna put them through a juicer. So you're gonna need a place to sort of mix this batter up, right? So we have a white plastic tub that is all we use it for is for making rapi pie. A uh, nice 18 quart fits in the sink because you're going to be doing a lot of uh, slopping and mixing and all this kind of stuff. And it fits in the sink nicely. Yeah, yeah, it's an 18 quart. Can't focus. Can't, can't focus. Ugh. Nonetheless, when you juice the potatoes, the rings that you produce through each cycle of juicing are going to go temporarily into this plastic tub. And from here, you're gonna put the scalding water, the scalding chicken broth, and that's the first pass of cooking the raw potato. I'll show you that shortly. When you're, yeah, this is the brawn juicer. It's the cat's ass for doing rapi pie. Everyone in Nova Scotia who really makes rapi pie by hand and does the potatoes themselves, they gotta have a good juicer. This is the one. It does a great job of shredding and removing the juice of the potato, that starchy juice. And of course, a mixer. Uh, back in the day, the way I was taught, you had to slap it by hand with a spoon and kind of keep stirring it. And this stuff is heavy and thick. And these wire, these thin wire beaters are better than the traditional sort of wider blade they don't get bogged down as much. So if you can find a beater with these kind of blades, I would say if you're going to make a rapid pie, this is what you want. For sure. And that's after you start scalding potato with all of this chicken broth. It's going to make your life so much easier. So much easier. And like I said, this is a process. There is no exact recipe. So you're going to see exactly how I do it. All right, so now we're gonna clean this bird off and we're gonna zip through a lot of these sections pretty quickly because, well, you know what you gotta do. Open the package and you wanna clean it off. You wanna get all the gizzards and the neck and all the weird bits that are inside that bird. Take all that stuff out. We're gonna, and then we're gonna rinse them off, give them a nice little bath because they're all full of all kinds of nastiness. 
and it saves you from having to, you know, strain the scum off the top, which is kind of gross in my opinion. So we're going to give it a nice cool bath, rinse it, and then we're going to throw that water away. And then we're going to fill it up with cool water. And through the magic of film editing, we're going to fill up this 20 quart, about three quarters of the way. That's enough, right? And then we're going to put salt in. You show, it shows me putting two tablespoons. You get really, if you're going to make this much broth, you're going to want it three. I found it was not salty enough, so three. Step two is going to get the onions chopped. And we're going to add salt and pepper and the onion to the water, which has the chicken already in it. And we're going to bring it to a boil. So through the magic of editing, we're going to chop up these three onions pretty quickly. And we're going to dice them. If you can get one of these machines, oh my God, just get a freaking onion chopper, okay? Save you a bunch of headaches. Just slam it down, boom. And that's what you want, a nice uh, finely diced up onion. That's the way I like to do it. And for this... I, it's about two cups, but you can't go wrong. A cup and a half, three cups, it don't matter. The, I would, three cups, you could easily do three cups in this Robbie pie. But if you only have two, two uh, onions, put the two onions in there. You'll be fine. All right, so we're going to add everything to the pot. And yeah, I already have salt and pepper in the pot already. And we're going to dump it all in here. Super easy. Mix that up a little bit. And we're going to put the lid on and we're going to bring it to a boil. And once it's boiling, we're going to let it simmer for three hours. Two to three hours later, we're going to let that sucker cool a little bit. And then we're going to get that bird out of the bathtub. And we're going to speed this up. So I have a giant ladle that is great for uh, serving one whole bowl of soup at a time. I'm going to use that and whatever else I can to scoop out the bird. You're going to want to make sure before you use the broth later on that you get all or any chicken parts that may have come off. Because sometimes a wing will come loose. and you know, Because this is literally fall off the bone boiled so there you go so yeah you make sure that there's nothing left in there and you gotta let this sucker cool for a good 15 20 minutes because you want to then you're gonna take all the bone or the meat off the bone yeah so let's let that cool so this is what you need you need some chicken deboned and in sort of bite-sized pieces How fast can you peel a potato? You got to peel. I would say for this size pan, uh, maybe 15 pounds of potatoes. 20 pounds is definitely too much for this size pan. And what I do is I just fill it up with uh, water and potatoes. And you'll see at the end how I have this sort of heaping pile of potatoes inside the pan that I'm going to put the rapi pie in. And then... We're going to juice it, and it's not all going to go in the white pan. So this is a brawn juicer, a centrifuge juicer. I've already cut the potatoes to a size that will fit through the little opening. And when you spin it, it grinds it down to a pulp. All the juice is going to be caught in the measuring cup that you see sitting there. And once we fill the measuring cup up with juice, once we've extracted about, it's about two cups... We're going to turn the machine off, let the remaining juice come out, and we're going to take that pulp ring and throw it in the bin. Now, at this point, it's extremely important. This is the part where you need to get that boiling broth into the potato mixture, or it's going to be. So we're going to do all the potatoes first, grind them, extract them, 
uh, juice some whatever, make all the potato rings. So right now is the time to make sure that your broth is boiling away on the stove. Boil that broth. And that's about it. So the broth should be boiling. And you can put the lid on. And we're going to show you how to make some potato rings with this thing. The trick to doing this is really just kind of taking your time and consistently slotting those potatoes in there. And when it gets about half full, just kind of slow down a little bit because it really um, fills up that two. Yeah, when it starts to get that close, you turn the machine off, let it finish spinning because this thing is spinning like a mother. And yeah, you hit the little brake, the electronic brake, slow it down and throw that thing in there. Get the last little bit of, of uh, pulp out and you can see it's, it's damp, but it's not really super wet. Empty that out and rinse and repeat. So we're going to do this until we have all the potato rings in the white tub. Now everything's in there. We're going to chop these up a little bit because they are the rings are still there. Yeah, see? Yeah. And you're going to want to break these up into, into kind of chunks. So I just take the, a metal spoon and just break them down a little bit to make them easier to uh, separate with the egg beater once I start putting the water in. So a boiling pot of water is about to be thrown in. And what, why, what happened to my edit? There it is. There it is. Dump that in there. A whole pot of water, about a quart of water. And get that first pot in there really quickly. And don't waste a lot of time on that first round because you want to get it nice and wet very, very quickly. So you can see here, I get it to about this consistency and I'm going to stop. I'm going to add another whole pot. So there's two pots of water have gone in there already. And if you get it to this point, you're pretty much golden. You're not going to screw up the, the potato mixture. I've done it before where you put the boiling water in and it creates these like potato uh, dumplings. And they're almost impossible to break up once they've created potato dumplings. So you can see, you can't see any potato. It's potato goop, right? It's completely pureed potato. You don't see any potato. The, the odd little piece of potato gets through the grinder. But for the most part, it's just a potato paste. And yeah, you can see, and it's still not done cooking. So the scalding water or broth is cooking the potato a little bit here at this phase and they will start to kind of set up. So here I put another whole ladle of, um, of broth in. Now at this point, I think that's probably enough liquid and it does thicken up. I think I added more, but you really can't screw it up too much. I mean, if you put way too much water liquid in, it would be just kind of too runny. I think I should have held off and put less that final bucket of broth that I put in there. I should have probably waited um, and not put it in and just that's a part that, that that's sort of a question in my mind. How moist the mixture is changes how it crusts up in the oven. And you want it to kind of crust up. You want a, the sides, the top, the bottom to form this crust, right? This potato crust. That's why everybody wants a corner piece. It's just the best part. And I think I may have done it a, a little bit too, uh, a little bit too wet. But like I said, you really can't screw it up. If you do it just like I did here and you have it at sort of this consistency, you'd be all right. You, at this point, you can answer the phone, you can do, you know, but until you've done, gotten it to this point, as far as rehydrating the potatoes, you really can't stop. Yeah, see how goopy that is? It was, it's probably good here. 
I can't remember at this point in the video whether I added more liquid. I, I, I shouldn't have if I did, because this is plenty, 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 plenty moist. Um, so that's it. So now it's a matter of getting everything into the Robbie pie pan. And this can sit here for, you know, 10, 15 minutes, no problem. While you get everything else ready, it'll just sit. And yeah, I mean, I think I may have overdone it with the liquid a little bit, but in the end, it still tastes like Robbie pie and it'll be fine. Now you can take your time and relax and just layer the pie up with the potato mixture on the bottom, chicken in the middle, and another layer of potato on top. Now, you got to spray the heck out of this pan with uh, cooking spray, just a standard oil cooking spray, not olive oil or anything weird like that. But spray the heck out of it. Just spray, spray, and then spray some more. All right, now we're going to start layering it in, okay? And I have, a, again, that same giant ladle I was using for the stock. I'm just going to layer it in. We're going to zip ahead here. Now we're going to layer in the chicken and the whole five pounds of chicken basically are going in now we're going to save a little bit because we're going to make a small uh, side pie so there's a layer of potatoes salt and pepper that layer can never have enough and then we're going to put the potato layer on top of that easy peasy There you go. And we have we had so much stuff left over. Normally, I would have made a rapi pie almost twice as big as this. So it would have been just enough to do one really big one. Uh, but I had to get an extra pan. And we're going to make a small rapi pie in this little small little pan. And put a little salt and pepper on top as well. And to make sure you leave a little bit of space around the edge when you fill it in. So it uh, gives it some some bubble room. So here's that final little side pie. These are always good to make because they crust up so well in these little pans. It's great. A little more salt and pepper and we're ready to go in the oven. 350, three hours, and then after the first three, we're gonna crank it up to 400. So this has been cooking, I think there's only 30 minutes left at this point, and you can see how brown it's getting on the top. That's what you wanna see. Now, I think I made it a little bit too runny, so it, it came out a little more, it didn't crust up as well as I would like. Maybe I should have left it in for another hour. Eh, after about four hours, it's ready to come out. All right, this is, uh, it came out of the oven and I saved myself a little a little bit in the, in the tin pan and this smaller loaf pan, that's all I have left because I gave the rest of it to my son, Mike, who I know enjoyed it immensely, but that's how it should look. It should be nice and crispy and kind of pulling away from the sides with a kind of a crust all the way around. It didn't happen this time because I think I maybe made it a little bit too runny, but I can tell you looking at it, a couple of weeks later, my mouth is watering and I'm about to make some more for uh, Christmas again. So hope you've enjoyed it. And remember, please give someone you love the corner piece. It's been a long time since I said this, but uh, I think it goes something like, wow. <laughs> See you later. Bye.